Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you ever so much for coming to the channel. Oh, the lovely Coriadora. Look at these beautiful fish. They are long fin albino Coriadoras. I got a group of six at a swap about uh, eight months ago. They didn't look this good at the time, but again, they were in a bag overnight in a crappy hotel room, sitting on a table. But I bought them anyway, and probably the best purchase I've ever made at a swap, if I'm being honest. There is no way I've, I, I've ever seen this particular form in this particular light. It, they are just fantastic. God, I wish they would spawn for me. Um, Perhaps they are in this aquarium, but I've never found the eggs. And if I did, this is an example of while I'm not a breeder, I would definitely take the eggs out and figure out a way to raise these up because I've never seen anything like these Coriadors before in my entire um, time in this hobby, which is almost my entire time on planet Earth. The, the albino Coriadora could not be more common in the hobby. It's a big box staple. They're ubiquitous. They're everywhere, the short fin in particular, but I see the long fin fairly often, but they're never as gorgeous as this. I got lucky and this tank has given them um, everything they want, everything they need. I mean, look at that one right there. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Now, right now, they're rooting around in this fabulous carpet. I know I just featured this aquarium, so I'm not going to kind of do another aquarium update, per se. I did just give it a trim, so it's looking particularly good right now. Um, even maybe better than the, <laughs> you see how the one just shot up and grabbed some air from the top of the tank. Coriadoras do that. They pull air, oxygen, um, out of the air, just like you and I do. Well, not like you and I do, but they do utilize that as well as their gills in order to, um, thrive. There, there goes another one. Right now they're rooting around in this carpet. Um, I put some algae wafers in here. A while back I put some brine shrimp and you know, some of those live little micro crustaceans, the baby brine shrimp will live for some time in your aquarium and they often, if they're not foolish enough to be just hanging up at the top by the light, which means they won't be hanging out very long at all in anybody's aquarium. Sometimes they make their way down into the carpet here. I mean, even that little mystery snail is showing uh, a bit of mimic mimicry here. He's trying to cop to the beauty of his albino Coriadora brethren. So props to the mystery snail. That's an ivory mystery snail. Boom, he just got boinked. Coriadoras are um, even the most common garden variety big box. They're adorable. They're just a cute fish and they bumble around like puppy dogs, like um, a box of Labrador retrievers. Um, while not beautiful in the classic sense of the word in that they have a, you know, a snout, they're catfish barbels, things that some people, many people find, um, I don't want to say repulsive, but kind of a turn off. The same way people don't appreciate catfish uh, in the sport fishing hobby. I mean, many, many people do. But whenever I'm catfishing, people say, do you eat that? They're gross. They're slimy. They're bottom feeders. Well, no catfish eats catfish shit, if I can be blunt. 
they don't eat feces. They eat food that falls to the bottom. They're opportunistic feeders. So bottom feeder gives them a bad rap. Now, granted, these are all feeding off the bottom. So it's a fair enough description, but it has a derogatory sense to it. That's just not fair. Not when you consider the beauty of these fish. Not to be not to be outdone, the uh, <coughs> longfin uh, calico placostomus, probably just the common, but with the long fin is hanging out there showing off his finnage. Now, sometimes these fish can be shy, but clearly mine are not. They are occupying center stage. I've joked in the past about this aquarium. I created a, a stage with all the background and then the carpet in front. And the fantasy was that all my fish would hang out that way. How could I have ever known that the ones that do the most frequently are Coriodoras? They're supposed to be the ones that are in back behind the plants, but someone didn't give these fish the memo because they're the only ones that are up front, the green neon tetras, the gold or brass tetras. And, and you know, I'm standing in front with this camera that they're generally a little more outgoing than what you see here, but still, it's the Coriodoras that are front and center. You have to forgive some of the shaking camera work here. I'm trying to be far away in my person, and so I'm stretching my hand. And even though I like to work out at the gym, it starts to strain your bicep holding an iPhone for seven, eight minutes to make a video. An ode to a Coriodora. Let me swish pan over to another group of Coriodoras in this particular tank. You see my reflection, the two glorious angels that are probably gonna have to be moved, but just as cute. And these come in the long fin too. They're just as cute, but these are not as beautiful. Let's be honest. The Classic, iconic panda Coriodora. I have a group of them in this aquarium. And while not as bold as those albino, they are pretty bold in and of themselves. There's a great shot. Now these particular ones have grown a little dusky. Panda Coriodoras will adjust to the tank they're in now, I'm not sure what causes it. it. Well, I know what causes it, but I'm not sure what exactly the stimuli, stimuli in this aquarium are, but I have a dusky version, so they're not stark white and black. They have a vaguely um, beige body with the, black, with the iconic black markings, which I think actually makes them look a little more wild, right, than the... Um, beautiful white. This one's even more so like that. I have quite a few in here, actually. You know, Coriodoras, even in a 20 gallon tank, you could have quite a few, especially if you get species like the two I'm talking about, the panda or the albino. They just don't get a whole, whole lot bigger than two inches and in change. At least they haven't in my aquarium. And so you could have a, a lot, and frankly, a lot is better than just a few. While these tank-raised Panda Coriodora will do fine as in a trio, I suppose, but doing fine versus living their best life is the intangible that uh, having a larger group will bring you, not to mention the potential for spawning, but they're just happier and more brave Maybe when people say my Coriodoras never come out, I'm gonna move away because of that reflection. They're saying that because they only have a couple. Now I'm gonna show you another long fin albino Coriodora that ironically I got at a swap. And he's fascinating, but there's no way as elegant and he needs to move because right now he just looks like he's in a coma. But this one here, 
has a strange dorsal fin and all of them do. I have three of these in here. And so it's not just the one, they have a funky, like it's in their DNA. And instead of long flowy fins, their pectoral fins stick out like wings. So they're pretty cool in their own right. I'm reluctant to try to scare this guy to get a better camera shot, but he's just not beautiful, right? He's interesting and cool looking and fascinating and I love him, but he isn't the ballerinas we were just looking at before. He's more stocky. And like I said, those wing-like pectorals and the strange dorsal, which right now he's in repose, so we're not getting a good camera shot. Here we have a Placostomus going to town on zucchini. That's a really good shot of that. I blanch my zucchini for about a minute or two. That means boiling it and then turning it off the boil and running cold water over it. And then I put, I, I put the sliced pieces in the ice box. Okay, here we go. There's another one. You see what I'm talking about? It's just different. It's just a different morph of the, of the long fin albino Coriodora. They're not at all the same other than a similar size and the title, Long Fin Coriodora. But you saw when he was swimming, a completely different animal. So that's fascinating. I've got three in here along with a bunch of uh, gold laser Coriodoras, some Aeneas and Venezuelan Coriodoras, but they are a little more, I don't wanna say shy, but they just like being in this intense, um, back third of the tank and can you blame them feels like where i would be if i was a coriodora there's a hill stream loach the borneo strain borneo hill stream loach there we go how beautiful huh very hardy actually and easy to breed like i said i don't breed uh, when the live bears do plenty of that i don't but i don't try there's a great great example i raised that fish Oh, a year ago, I showed you its parent, and I didn't know if it could spawn because of its uh, hybridized nature. But look at that gorgeous animal. Are you, I mean, live bears, even like Coriodoras, people can kind of shrug and go, eh. Plecos, albino quarries, mollies. I don't know, common, sure but they're popular for a reason. Those are the fish I started with. Look at that blue dream shrimp. There's a whole bunch of them in this Blixa Japanica. Now shrimp, some people call them a little, like they, they say they look like cockroaches. Honestly, I've heard that more than a few times because they act like bugs, they're water bugs. So in a way I'm featuring all the quote unquote ugly creatures in this hobby that for those of us who are in this hobby here we go i mean it's cool looking but oh, totally different animal but as i was saying the coriodora the placostomus the shrimp the invertebrates those that are not in the hobby would off, will often be fascinated, but sometimes grossed out by these fish. I've heard that. I've seen it with my own eyes and ears, heard it, you know, with these tanks we're looking at now. Like, ew, dad, what's, he, what's that fish doing? Why does it have those whiskers? <laughs> That's the way God made them, sweetheart. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Why is he sucking on the glass? He looks like alien, the alien head sucker. There's a gorgeous red form, a male there of the uh, bristle nose pleco. But you know, we hear all this that with the sucking and the scratching and the bottom feeding, you know, they be it becomes like fish racism in a way. A negative bias based on preconceived notions of what beauty and disgusting 
what those terms are. And of all the things, I mean, this hobby does for our perspective and our appreciation of planet Earth. One of them is uh, changing our sense of what ugly and beautiful really mean. This fish is unequivocally beautiful. And look at that sheen. It's like a plat. I mean, I don't even know what these would cost if you came across them at a nice pet store if you, if the owner had them like this I've never seen them like this have you I mean am I going off with these fish I love all the fish I just showed you and talked about but are you kidding me <laughs> I can't find a single negative about these animals that we're looking at. And they do, and they work. They're working, they're cleaning my carpet. They're like the most beautiful cleaning ladies on earth. What was that bad romantic comedy about the Jennifer Lopez as a cleaning lady? Yeah, right, that'll happen. But that's like this, these cleaning uh, ladies and cleaning men, I can't sex them, they're freaking, Gorgeous. Have you, do you, how, do you relate to what I'm talking about between what beauty and ugly mean after a while when you're in this hobby and how the definitions just can be turned upside down? And have you ever seen Coriadoras doing this sort of dance with this sort of finage and color and shape? What's your favorite Coriadora? I have some Adolfa Coriadoras for a while. Those were my favorite and they're in the main display, but they haven't grown as big as I kind of was hoping they would. And these crowd pleasers have become the apples of my eye. Anyway, thank you for watching. Comment, hit me up ask a question, answer some of the ones I asked. And thank you so much again for coming to the channel. All right, everybody. As always, keep your hands in the tank and ciao for now.